Welcome to Structure of the Atom. So far, we've traced the development of atomic theory to the point where we've discovered some of the key features of the atom. In the last video, we looked at Rutherford's model, and we can see that there is a great deal of empty space in the atom. And in that empty space, electrons sort of are hanging out, and they're uh, moving around in rotating rings. We also have the center of the atom, we call the nucleus, the core of the atom that has all the atom's mass and the positive charge. And in this video, we're going to continue to describe the atom, looking at some of the particulars of protons, neutrons, and electrons, uh, as well as looking at how we can represent atoms using element symbol notation. We collectively refer to protons, neutrons, and electrons as subatomic particles. Now we're going to examine some of the characteristics of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The first of these characteristics is the location of the subatomic particle. The next thing we're going to look at is the charge of the particle. And lastly, we're going to look at the mass of the particle. So starting with location, we know that protons are in the nucleus. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. And electrons are in the empty space outside the nucleus. In terms of charge, protons are positive. Neutrons have no charge, big zero there, no charge, and electrons are negatively charged. That leaves us looking at the mass. Now the mass is going to be a little bit more interesting in terms of how we can represent it effectively because we know the mass of protons, neutrons, and electrons, but writing it out can be a little tedious. I'll show you what I mean. Protons are 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th power grams. Neutrons are 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. And electrons are 9.1 times 10 to the negative 28th grams. So having to write out these numbers would be extremely annoying if you had to do it over and over and over again. So we need a more effective way of representing mass. To make the mass easier to represent, it was decided that a proton and a neutron would both have a mass of one atomic mass unit. So we came up with a new unit called Atomic Mass Unit, or AMU. The value of one AMU is derived from looking at an atom of carbon, which has six protons and six neutrons. Okay? So it took the mass of a single atom of carbon, and then divided that by 12. 12 because that's a combined number of protons and neutrons. So they set that value equal to one AMU. So using atomic mass units, we can now fill this in a little bit more effectively. A proton is one AMU. A neutron is one AMU as well. Now an electron is close to one two thousandth of an AMU. It's actually out of 1,836 instead of 2,000, but it's pretty close. Uh, we can also represent that with roughly 0 0.0005 AMU for an electron. Now for most purposes, we're going to treat it as zero because it's pretty negligible. It's a really, really small amount. Now that we know some of the features or characteristics, it's helpful of having a way to represent the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in any given atom. To do that, we have something called element symbol notation. And we're going to use an example to show us how this works, what it looks like, and how we can use it. The first thing we start with is an element symbol. We're going to look at an atom of oxygen. So here's our element symbol for oxygen, O. Now to represent an atom, a single atom of oxygen, and be able to describe completely its protons and neutrons, we need two more pieces of information. And that notation gives it to us like this. 8 and 16 in that arrangement. So we have 16, O, 8. Now let's talk about what these parts mean. So the first thing is that this O tells us what the element is, the element name. Okay, the symbol gives us the element name. Next, we have this component, the 8. The 8 is called the atomic number. It tells you the number of protons in this atom. That's the single determining factor in what element it is. Every single atom of oxygen has 8 protons in it. If it had 9 protons, it would be a different element. At seven protons, it would be another element. Okay, so the number of protons is a single determining factor in what element you have. 
The next piece of information is this 16. So the 16 is something called the mass number. Now the mass number, as the names might indicate to you, uh, tells you the mass of the atom. And now we know from our chart before that most of the mass in the atom comes from protons and neutrons. So the mass number actually tells you the combined number of protons and neutrons in an atom. So if you know the mass number and you know the atomic number, you can figure out the number of protons and neutrons in this particular atom. The last thing we're going to mention is that for all atoms, the number of electrons, the negative charges, has to equal the number of protons, the positive charges. That way it's overall neutral. We have a balance of positive and negative. So the number of electrons equals the number of protons. That wraps up our introduction to the structure of the atom. Any questions you have, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.